Hi everybody! So it is time for our next chapter of the Enchanted Wood. So last chapter we read, the girls and Moonface had managed to go and find the house of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. And the Three Bears had said that they would help them find Joe in the land of ice and snow because the polar bears that live there are their cousins. So let's see what happens when they get to the land of ice and snow. This chapter is called The Battle of the Bears. Goldilocks, the three bears, the girls and Moonface all went out of the little cottage. How strange it seemed to see roses blooming all over the walls when ice and snow lay all around. The thing is, where do we go to find the polar bears, said Goldilocks. Over there, towards the sun, said Father Bear. Bessie and Fanny were surprised to see both the moon and the sun shining in the sky. They followed the father bear, slipping and sliding and holding on to one another. It was very cold and their noses and toes felt as if they were freezing. Suddenly, they saw the little house that Joe had built for the magic snowman. Look, said father bear, we'd better make for that. But before they got there, a big white figure squeezed itself out of the snow house and saw them. It was the magic snowman. As soon as he saw the three bears and the others, he began to shout loudly in a windy, snowy voice. Enemies! Enemies! Hey, bears! Come and send off the enemies! We're not enemies, yelled Moonface, and Goldilocks ran forward to show the snowman that she was a little girl. But Moonface pulled her back. He didn't trust that old snowman. The snowman bent his big, fat body down and picked up great handfuls of snow. He threw one at Goldilocks. She ducked down and it passed over her and hit the baby bear. Ouch, he said, and sat down in a hurry. Then everything happened at once. A crowd of white polar bears hurried out of their underground home to help the snowman. And soon the air was full of flying snowballs. The snow was hard and the balls hurt when they hit anyone. It wasn't a bit good the girls shouting out that they were friends, not enemies. Nobody heard them and soon there was a fierce battle going on. Oh dear, gasped Bessie, trying her best to throw straight. This is dreadful. We shall never rescue Joe by behaving like this but there really didn't seem anything else to be done. After all, if people were fighting you, you can't do much but defend yourself. And the three bears and the girls and Moonface felt very angry at having hard snowballs thrown at them. Smack, thud, biff, squish. The snowballs burst as they hit and soon there was a great noise of angry oomphs from the white bears and ooches from the teddy bears and yells from the children and screeches from Moonface who acted as if he were mad hopping about and yelling, kicking up the snow as if he were throwing it. His big fat face was a fine target for snowballs and he was hit more than anybody else. Poor old Moonface. And there's a picture here of the angry snowman and the polar bears and lots of snowballs being thrown all around. Okay. Now, whilst this fierce battle was going on, where do you suppose Joe was? As soon as he heard the cry of enemies, enemies, he had hidden in a corner, for he didn't want to be mixed up in any fight. When he saw the white bears going out, he was left all alone. He began at once to think of escaping. He crept to the hole that led above ground. The battle was some way off, so Joe did not see that the enemies were really his own friends. If he had, he would have gone to join them at once. What a terrible noise they're all making, he thought. It sounds like a battle between gorillas and bears to me. I'm not going near them. I'd be eaten up or something. I should just run hard the opposite way and hope I'll meet someone to help me. So, Joe dressed in his bear skin and looking just like a little white bear himself, crept off over the ice and snow, not seen by anyone. He ran as soon as he thought he was out of sight. He ran and he ran and he ran he met nobody. Not a soul was to be seen. Only a lonely seal lay on a shelf of ice, but even he dived below as, he, as soon as he saw Joe. And then Joe stopped in the greatest astonishment and stared as if his eyes would fall out of his head. He'd come to the cottage of the three bears, standing all alone in the middle of the ice and snow. And of course its roses were still blooming round it, scenting all the air. I must be dreaming, said Joe. I simply must be dreaming. A cottage with roses here in the middle of the snow? Well, I shall go and see who lives there. Perhaps they will give me something to eat and let me rest, for I'm very hungry and tired. He knocked at the door, but there was no answer. 
He opened the door and went in. How he stared. Well, there was no one to be seen at all, but on the table stood three bowls of steaming porridge, one big, one middle-sized and one small. It was rather dark, so Joe lighted a big candle on the table. Then he sank down onto the biggest chair, but it was far too big and he got up again. He sat down on the next sized chair, but that was piled too high with cushions and he got up to sit in the smallest chair. That was just right. And Joe settled down comfortably. But alas, his weight was too much for it and the chair broke to bits beneath him. He looked at the delicious porridge. He tasted the porridge in the biggest bowl. It was much too hot and the porridge burnt his tongue. He tasted the next bowl, but that was too sweet. For when he tasted the porridge in the little bowl, that was just right. So Joel ate it all up. Then he felt so sleepy, he thought he really must rest. So he went into the bedroom and lay down on the biggest bed. I wonder if you can guess what's going to happen, because this is very like the real story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. So Joe lay down on the biggest bed, but it was far too big. So he tried the middle-sized one. That was too soft and it went down in the middle. So Joe lay down on the cot and that was so small and warm and comfortable that he fell fast asleep. All this time the battle was going on. The snowman was so big and the polar bears were so fierce that soon the teddy bears, the children and Moonface were driven backwards. Then a snowstorm blew up and the snow fell so thickly that it was quite impossible to see anything. Moonface called out in alarm, bears! Goldilocks, Bessie, Fanny, take hold of each other's hands at once and don't let go. One of us might easily be lost in the storm. Everyone took hands at once. The snow blew into their faces and they could see nothing. Bending forwards, they began to walk carefully away from the white bears, who'd stopped fighting now and were trying to find their way out. Don't shout or anything, said Moonface. We don't want the white bears to hear us in case they take us prisoners. They might not listen to the teddy bears. Move off and will look for some sort of shelter till this storm is over. They were all very miserable. They were cold, rather frightened and quite lost. They stumbled over the snow, keeping hold of one another's hands firmly. They went on and on and suddenly Goldilocks shook off Moonface's hand and pointed in front of them. A light, she said in astonishment. Everyone stopped. I say, I say it's our cottage, shrieked the baby bear in surprise and delight. But who's inside? Someone must have lighted the candle. They all stared at the lighted window. Who was inside the cottage? Could the magic snowman have found it? Or the polar bears? Was it an enemy inside or a friend? Wee! The wind blew and the snowflakes fell thickly on everyone as they stood there wondering. Ooh, shivered Moonface, we shall get dreadful cold standing out here in the snow. Let's go in and find out who's there. So the father bear opened the door and one by one they all trooped in looking round at the empty room inside. And soon they will find Joe fast asleep in Baby Bear's cot. Okay, so we'll read the next one soon. Bye.